And now it's time for our guest. Welcome to Dan Evans from We Are Tilt. Before we say hello, let's um, let's have a look at a trailer for a film they've put together, filming under COVID nineteen. So we've uh, we've heard about the short film that you've produced about filming under COVID nineteen. Can you start off telling us a bit more about what inspired you to do it, who was involved, and and, and what you hope to achieve with it? Yeah, um, well, basically, um, I work for a digital agency. Um, I'm a founder and a director in um, We Are Tilt in Brighton. Uh, my specialty is film, and um, for everything else in the digital agency, it's been a very easy transition with COVID. In 36 mm. hours, we were all working from home and it was fine. Um, with film, obviously, it's been a different story, hasn't it? And um, so many shoots that are in our calendar were indefinitely cancelled or evaporated. And um, to start off with, we didn't really know what to do. I mean, we went through a phase. Some of the Some of the jobs that we had for clients, we started using phone calls and stock footage. And we did some very nice films like that. I mean, you obviously have to uh, avoid cheese and things. But we made some quite nice films yeah, for very, Barclays yeah, very, using yeah. using phone calls and stock footage. It means you can phone people around the world. But there's a limit on that, really. And um, as production creatives, we all signed up to filming properly. You know, we want to get our hands on kit and, you know, line up shots. And we, we don't want to work with a webcam. So... Um, so yeah, so that's how it came about. Really, we uh, our new business um, person was being asked constantly by clients. Um, so what what prompted you to what prompted you to make the film that that would that would you know ultimately end up being something online, telling everyone else how to do it? Well, we'd seen lots of things of people saying this is how we do it with very little information really and no actual hands on mm. showing us how you do it, and. Um, when the APA guide, shooting guidelines, the, the APA COVID-19 shooting guidelines came along, it felt like kind of a bit of a green card to say, OK, we've got a, a framework now to um, through which we can actually run a shoot safely. Before that, it was just guesswork, and um, which legally you think, oh, God, this could leave us high and dry. Um, so once we had some guidelines, it felt like the right time to be able to do a shoot. And we had this amazing opportunity to... Um, film Lois O'Hara, who is, uh, she's a, an artist, a mural artist. She's um, well known for um, doing huge murals on basketball courts. Um, there's some in Australia, right. there's some in London, some in Brighton. And um, so we saw that as a great opportunity actually to do a making of film. Um, and although it's a, you know, like most of our shoots, it's a small shoot. So, you know, it, it is a lot easier on a small you know, at a small level like that, it must be a lot more difficult if you're doing a Netflix show or something like that. But um, yeah. it just felt like the right opportunity. And Lois was very, you know, up for it. Um, we obviously had to talk to her all about it because there was some worries. You know, you say, you know, this is our first film since lockdown. You know, you, you we have to be very careful. But we, we basically followed the APA COVID-19 shooting guidelines to the letter, really. And um, it was an interesting exercise for us to do as well in the respect that when we do actually go and have client shoots, we need to practice this stuff. Um, suddenly you, your call sheet you, has got three times fine. long. Yeah. Sorry? Sorry, I'd interrupt. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just thought you did find that the APA guidelines were A, easy to follow, and being as there are other guidelines out there, they were the ones, you know, you chose the APA guidelines over and above everything else, and were they easy to follow? That's the question, I guess. I found that I found that the APA guidelines were very easy to follow. We um, we had looked at a few different sets of guidelines, and it felt like the timing was right, and that they were the right they were comprehensive enough for us to feel comfortable with it. Now I know there are lots of guidelines out there, and in time I think the government guidelines will come along. But for us, it certainly felt like this is the first time. Yeah, we can feel 
safe in doing a shoot and not worried about our clients, not worried about the talent, not worried about our own crew. And yeah, so there, it was it was good. There, I mean, there was a lot there though. So we had to go through it and just find the things that were relevant to our shoot. Because like I said, this is a, it was a small shoot. Um, so we, you know, we chose to avoid things like hair and makeup. There was only two interviewees and they weren't into, they weren't on camera at the same time. There was many reasons why it was quite an easy thing to do. Um, so it did, it did feel like the right one to start with really, because, so Dan, it, you know, I think. So Dan, the, um, so Dan, the APA for those that don't know is a, a body that looks after, well, it's the advertising produce producers association. I think look after companies like yourself that are creating content for commercials um that's correct I mean, uh, that's correct yeah it's a trade it's a trade body the apa i don't want to talk too much okay. about them because i've spoken to the apa and we're not because we're so small at the film department in tilt are so small we're not yet members of the apa but they were just very prominent guidelines so i spoke to them and sure, they said so yeah well let's chat then but um, we haven't chatted yet so i don't want to go too much into that oh well, <laughs> this is a bit of a plug for them then um can you maybe yeah, i, I think we should plug points, them, but so... I don't, I, i'm not i'm not the knowledge on the apa <laughs> No, no, of course not. Can you give us a few bullet points of the guidelines that you took from there that you did use and were useful? Yeah, I mean, the the big things really, um, the key points I would say, there was lots, you know, there's loads of, lots of things that we had to do. And we, in our call sheet, stroke shot list, we kind of, well, actually, we did have separate call sheets and shot list, but in our shot list, we added all the extra um, things that we had to do. Because it was so new to us, we we thought if we don't put it in the shot list, we'll forget something yeah. or do something in the wrong order. So there was a bit of time spent doing that. The biggest thing that we did that I think is the best the best thing that we did was to have a COVID officer. So we Mel, who is um, our health and safety that, yeah. person on shoot, she was our COVID nineteen safety officer for all throughout the production. So from pre production through production and um, post, she was there to help with anything. And particularly on the shoot, she was just there watching us because as soon as you get out shooting, you just fall back to old habits. It's so easy to fall into old habits. You know, 20 minutes in, you start clustering. You start, you know, you start wanting to help each other out with equipment and things like that. I mean, first and foremost, pre-production, um, we just made sure it was all remote. We just did everything remotely um even for yeah. the reckies we were just like let's just do it on google earth you know we it was in brighton so we know the area anyway so we're just like let's just do it on google earth we can get the angles we can you know so all that was done um remotely uh remote officers everyone working from home um the apa have a health declaration form that we followed and you send that out to all participants it's not a waiver you can't have a waiver to say if you get covid then it's not our fault but it's a form that says you haven't yeah. been abroad in the last two weeks to um, COVID-19 hotspots. Um, it says that you haven't had symptoms in the last two weeks. I think it's two weeks. It says that you haven't recently had symptoms. Um, basically, a health report that you sign saying, I haven't had this. Mm. Um, exactly. Then when everyone arrives on set, temperature checks. Um, there's two tiers of PPE. We use mostly tier one, which is um, masks. Uh, sorry, masks and, and gloves, medical gloves. Um, Mel sometimes wore a visor because when she was doing the temperature checks to get a good reading, sometimes she'd have to break the two meter rule. So she had a visor from time to time. Um, it's cleaning the kit at the start and holding onto your own kit throughout the day. So you're not, as you would usually do, you know, passing cameras around or help mucking and helping people out with their equipment. You just literally, that's your kit. Um, whatever happens with that kit, you have to be responsible for it or then no one else can touch it. So Dan, obviously you've gone through this process now of actually making a film and following these guidelines. What learnings did you take from uh, actually getting involved and in doing it? Yeah, it's a good point actually. Um, it was something that we hadn't anticipated, we hadn't thought about this when, before we made the film, but actually by the process of doing it really does show you the blockers and it's good to know those before you go into a, um, a big client shoot. And you find those things out on set. Um, so a few of the things, for example, uh, I guess it's quite obvious, really, but everything takes a lot more time. You just have to build in that time. You know, these a lot of our shoots tend to be so rapid. We're like, right, we've got, you know, we'll, we'll cram in far too many shots for the 
for the day, you know. But um, for this, we just made the decision, let's just slow everything down, give it lots more space, loads of space in the call sheet. And that was very, very important to do because there's so many hoops that you have to jump through. But that's, that is real key, really key. Um, the second thing, the skeleton crew was a real challenge. I mean, um, it essentially was myself as director, Harry Osborne as the um, cinematographer, and a, um, AJ for sound plus a COVID officer. So we, that meant that I was interviewing Lois whilst doing the follow focus. And that, I've never done that before, and that was quite challenging. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. you know, getting a rapport with someone whilst doing this. You know, it's it's not ideal. Um, carrying of kit. So there was one point where we moved location. It's better to try and limit the locations because there was one point where we had to, it was only about half a K that we had to transport kit. But the kit that I had tended to be the bulky stuff. But no one could help me out. Normally, everyone will grab a bag and it's fine. But it was a hot, sunny day. There's a big hill. And five times later, everyone else is eating their sandwiches. And you're like, you, you know, it's, um, it's, that was a difficult one. And uh, it wasn't just me. Everyone found that because they had their own items to carry. Um, but there was a point in the day where I was like, oh, my goodness, this is this is a bit much. Um, other things, I guess, um, just things, little things like medical gloves. They're just, when you've got equipment, they're just continually tearing. So you, you think the gloves will be all right for the next three hours. They won't. They'll, they'll break. You have to regel your hands, put new gloves on, put them in a prominent bin, you know, so... Just little things like that, really, but it's um, it's just all good st- stuff that's good to know. But I mean, overall, it was a fantastic shoot. We, you know, we really really enjoyed the day. It was good to learn these new things and good to know where the hurdles were. I think. Um, in terms of kit, you mentioned there, are you using all your own kit or you're hiring in kit? Um, and I guess you must be hiring in some stuff. And how does that sort of workflow work? Well, initially, because it's a, um, because the making of film was a self funded piece. We just wanted to use all our own kit. And um, so, I mean, we usually use a, a Canon C300 Mark II. We're, we're about to get a 500 Mark II soon. Um, but that's a nice versatile camera for us. Um, but in the guidelines, there's a lot about hiring. And so we thought it would be a good idea to, at the very least, we wanted to get with some prominent monitors, so some big client monitors. So that no one, there's no temptation to huddle around camera LCDs and things like that. Um, so I talked to promotion yeah. hire and as soon as I talked to promotion hire, I could see that they were, they were really interested in this as well. Well, so from going from a film that we were just going to do to show our clients, it has sort of grown into something that, um, really is a kind of an, we want it to be an informational piece for filmmakers that promotion hire can be involved in, that red can be involved in. I mean, um, promotion hire lent us an amazing red monstro, which is absolutely perfect for the shoot that we're doing. Because Lois's film is um, youthy and it's kind of, there's kind of sort of a fashiony element to it. So um, it was the perfect camera. I mean, possibly overkill, 8K, <laughs> but brilliant, you know, just amazing. And um, coupled with some um, Canon, Canon Sumire lenses. Um, so, yeah, Promotion High were great. And they also um, got involved with the interviews so we could get their side of things. And um, together, it's, quite, it's a good partnership. You know, we, we put, I think we put together a nice film. It's longer than I had hoped it would be, but it needs to be because there's so much to go through. We still had to cut loads out, um, but there is so much to go through. So we couldn't really treat it as a 90-second viral piece. That that was the initial intent. Um, But actually, once you start getting into the nuts and bolts of it, there's a lot to talk about. So um, we just had to make a decision and say, let's let this film be what it needs to be. And, you know, if people like it, if it's useful to people, brilliant. You know, and... um, that's my hopes and aspirations for it, really. I hope that filmmakers will be inspired by... Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, 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 yeah, it's a very thorough, thorough piece. It covers, it covers everything that, uh, that people need to know. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed watching it. It's been, been, been very good. Um, no, it's been yeah, fantastic right. having you on. And there, there, yeah, there's, and there's a link on screen now that people can, um, can take a look themselves. So, as, as you say, I'm sure it'll be a great benefit to them.